Hey, I'm Sam, and I'm a certified scuba diver who loves the ocean because it's filled with all kinds of amazing creatures, both big and small. It's such a magical place. When I get to explore this underwater world, it's always an adventure. in the Florida Keys, meeting up with two experts from NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. I'll be going on a dive with John Cachenego, a unit diving supervisor, and Laura J. Grove, a research fishery biologist. Elbow Reef is a popular dive spot here in the Keys. It has some beautiful reef systems that have formed on some very old shipwrecks. These reefs are home to all kinds of marine life. Here we go. Elbow Reef is commonly called Wreck Reef. I see why. I'm holding on to a mooring buoy line that starts at the surface and anchors the boat without creating damage to the reef habitat. It's pretty quiet down here, considering coral reefs create homes for about nine million species. Look, a little drumfish swimming in and out of the coral. And a school of tiny mangrove fish playing follow the leader. There's a different species at every turn. This starfish is about the size of my hand. And this is a basket starfish. It's a bit smaller and has twisting tentacles with tiny hooks to catch prey really amazing. Hiding behind those rocks is a yellow stingray. Let's get a closer look. Too late. Off it goes. Let's get up close to the coral. These buds are one of the tiniest architects of the reef, coral polyps. Coral polyps are super small organisms that attach themselves to rocks on the seafloor and divide into thousands of clones to create colonies that become reefs. This shipwreck's rusted remains are buried under vegetation and coral formations. It's the perfect reef habitat. You can see some parts are still intact, like the bow and decks. These shipwrecks have been grounded since the late 19th and 20th centuries. There are so many awesome species in maritime history living in this reef. Time to dry off and learn more. Jay and John, can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do as your jobs? I am a NOAA Corps officer. I work with a maritime heritage group, map shipwrecks, and uh, I'm also the unit diving supervisor. So I uh, monitor all diving activities within the Florida Keys and ensure everything is safe and everyone is following NOAA policy and standards. So how often do you dive on a weekly basis? Any day that it's nice. Basically, if it's not blowing 15 or more, I'm out on the water. I'm, okay. I, this is my office most days. Wow, that's a pretty cool office. And how about you, Jay? I am a research fishery biologist, so I am a scientist. And I do a lot of work with the National Coral Reef Monitoring Program. So I am down there doing assessments of reef fish. So I'm down there often with a fish stick measuring fish and recording information on fish and coral all throughout the Florida Keys, um, Dry Tortugas, and the U.S. Caribbean. That's super neat. Jay has the awesome job of naming any new unknown species she discovers. Now that's pretty cool. So we're here at Elbow Reef, and is this reef actually shaped like an elbow? Actually, yeah. You kind of, if you looked at the chart, here's Florida, right? Yeah. Here's uh, the reef line. Elbow Reef kind of juts out like an elbow here. Okay. So for whatever reason, has attracted several shipwrecks of steamships over the years. I would say that shipwreck is a ship that has gone aground and sank. Or just maybe it didn't go aground, but something caused it to take on water and sink. It was not deliberately sunk. Whereas okay. an artificial reef, people decided we are going to clean this up and try to remove 
all harmful chemicals and substance and deliberately sink it. Okay. Old subway cars, naval ships, and even tires have been sunk to create artificial reefs. Why do they do that? A lot of it has to do with tourism. Tourism, diving, artificial reefs make great fish habitat. They're just a great spot for everybody to visit. One of the most popular artificial reef sites in Florida is the Duane, an old military ship that was intentionally sunk in 1987. These habitats are beautiful, but can be very damaging to these sensitive environmental areas. Biologists generally prefer that these artificial reefs remain as natural as possible. When did those shipwrecks sink? So the acorn went down in 1885. Wow. It was 167 feet. And the Hannah M. Bell went down in 1911, and she was 315 feet. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Based off of the wrecks that we saw on the reef, how can you tell that it's fully established? That's a great question. And it's because, if you notice, when we were kind of bopping between the natural reef onto the shipwreck, you didn't see a lot of change, right? You didn't see a lot of change in the structure. You saw some of the same um, organisms. You yeah. saw the same corals, the same gorgonians. You saw the same fish. And a newer shipwreck wouldn't necessarily have that. Okay. But it was a seamless transition. And sometimes you would almost have to look down to say, am I over the shipwreck or yeah. am I a natural reef? Yeah, so it that's... was hard to tell. So what were some of the creatures that we saw down there, Jay? We saw tons of creatures on the side. We saw two different stingrays, right? Absolutely. You saw a southern stingray and a yellow stingray. The yellow stingrays are ridiculously cute. And he swims pretty fast. Yeah. If you spook him, they definitely will yeah, swim pretty Yeah, I quickly. wasn't trying to spook him. <laughs> Just happens. Yeah. And then we saw a really cool fish that had a long snout and blue polka dots. Yes. What was that? That was a scrawled file fish. That is a awesome fish. That's yeah. super neat. Thanks, guys, for taking me out on this dive. Coral reef systems provide food and shelter to all kinds of species. Reefs also play a very important role in keeping us safe, acting as a barrier to protect our shorelines from damaging waves, storms, and floods. on what Sam sees.